Hello, everyone, and thank you for inviting me. Um, so I will definitely touch on gender, uh, and I will also offer a, a slightly more programmatic input uh, to this round table, which so far has been incredibly stimulating. Um, this programmatic input is, is rooted in the kinds of researcher and practitioner communities that I work in. Uh, and based on yesterday's lively discussions, I'm pretty sure that we'll have lively discussions on these as well. Um, so a little bit of, of my, uh, where I come from, um, I've got an echo. Um, I'm the director of the ict for d Centre at Royal Holloway, uh, at which is part of the University of London. And uh, this year I'm also a faculty associate at Harvard at the Berkman Centre, which uh, Anita referenced where the first meeting uh, took place. Um, I work with NGOs and we collectively work with NGOs, private sector and, and policy makers. Um, based on yesterday's really stimulating discussions, when I say ICT for D, I feel compelled to define what I mean with by my D. I noticed that Roberto very elegantly sidestepped that one. Um, I'm going to try and tackle that one that sort of a little bit head on. Uh, so in, in our group, we're, we're 10 academics, 15 PhD students, uh, five master students, and, and probably we all have our own idea of what we mean by development. But two key notions for us are, are definitely development as sustainable development. Uh, so looking at uh, whether the lives that we lead are socially, economically, and environmentally sustainable. Um, and secondly, development uh, in the sense of a Amartya Sen's capabilities approach uh, as the degree of freedom that people have to live the lives that they have reason to value. They themselves have reason to value, collectively and individually. Um, and in the terms of both of these notions of development, all countries are developing countries. So I've been on record for multiple years on kind of trying to get this particular point across um, but I think this is a really important and quite a liberating notion for, for a lot of us, uh, as well as obviously a grand challenge. Uh, in our group, we, we, we strive for a participatory, gender-aware, culturally sensitive and engaged approach, um, and indeed a critically constructive engagement um, with the multidisciplinary ict d field, and of course our, our various disciplines that we relate to. Um, together with others, uh, we were, for example, ex uh, responsible for trying to shape the ICTD conference to include some of the open sessions that Tigrit mentioned yesterday. Uh, you know, thank you for mentioning the, the punk ICT for D1 that was um, uh, PhD researchers from our center that were kind of pushing for that. And that's the kind of criticality uh, which I think that the field needs. Um, we do not, at uh, in, our, in our group, in our centre, we do not sort ourselves and our students neatly by country so that those with a Kenyan passport can only do research in Kenya, those with an Indian passport can only do research in India, and those with a UK passport can only do research in the UK. Um, to give you an example, uh, we have a Peruvian researcher working on tech hubs in Zambia with a critical approach. Uh, we have a Filipino activist researcher doing work on gay activists in Indonesia, a Japanese stu student doing field research on environmental activists in the UK, um, an Ecuadorian researching digital inclusion in Brazil, um, US student doing research on race and ICT in the US, a Swedish student doing questioning discourses of female entrepreneurialism uh, in collaborative action research in Tanzania, Colleagues are doing participatory digital mapping with indigenous communities, both in uh, the Guinean Amazon and in Kenya, uh, sorry, and in Canada. Uh, and then there's UK researchers doing work on race and ICT in the UK, on notions of ICT and privacy with the prison population in the UK, uh, and on gender and participatory video in Zambia. Um, Basically, I'm giving you all of these examples to give you an idea that it's all ICT for D for us. Um, my own work is at the interface of ICTs, the capabilities approach, which I've already mentioned, um, gender, equity, and sustainability. 
And what I thought I could offer for this particular roundtable is a sort of non-exhaustive list of six areas which I believe we need in a future research agenda on inclusion in the network society. Just to get us, if you want, kick us off or continue the conversation and so on. Um, my own views are inspired by Marcia Sen's capabilities approach, but I'm consciously complementing it with um, notions of structure, which I think are, are less developed in Sen, uh, and trying to drive it towards a concrete application of ICT for D. Um, I've done this via the, the choice framework, which I've explained in my recent book, and believe me, if you ask me over coffee, I could go into great detail, which I won't right now. Um, the point of the, the, on the points that I will be presenting on the list are very heavily influenced um, by work that we did recently interviewing 35 researchers, experts uh, who were ICT, uh, who were doing work in ICTs and child-related development. And we did this work uh, interviewing those experts for UNICEF. Um, we've uh, brought, together with UNICEF, basically put the results in, in this report. If you're interested, I've got a copy for everyone. You can pick one up at tea. Um, it's an interesting report in its own right, but it's also for a lot of the things that are coming up in our discussions here. Uh, this, is, this is good ammunition. Uh, <laughs> The, there's some really interesting findings in terms of participatory approaches, um, the, the importance of context-specific interventions and appropriate and iterative design. Uh, we launched the report uh, in May and uh, Guru was there on, on the panel also commenting on it, so he'll, he'll have his own thoughts of, of what he thought both of the panel and, and the report. Um, the the, the report shows a fairly encouraging picture, is what I'm saying, and if you wanted to basically see that we're not alone in this room basically thinking about some of these things, it's a, it's a useful point. So my six points for the future would be, we've got, firstly, to think about fundamental governance discussions about the internet, its spaces, its opportunities, services, publics, content, metadata, etc., and whether those are constructed as public or private goods. Uh, this is vital, and many of you in the room are doing this work. Thank you, and we need you. Please, I think this is, this is core. Uh, then, secondly, we need continued engagement with the technical complexities and the business and community funding models for first mile connectivity. Um, we need this work as well, and I think a, a crucial part of this and other debates has been community informatics, Mike Gorston is in the room. This is a sort of key contribution as well. Um, we've got, thirdly, uh, the importance of the, the recognition and importance of diversity, uh, not just in access devices, but also in access spaces. Um, and indeed, we need to look at the social norms uh, that govern the use of these spaces, in particular communal IT access spaces, which have in the past played an important role for disadvantaged groups, including women. Uh, and women might congregate there. Um, Deborah Wheeler, Sharon Madden, myself have worked on this, and indeed the work of IT for change has been doing a lot of this work as well. And it's in such spaces that, that educational, social, but also psychological resources are built uh, which strengthen individual and collective agency. And the degree of confidence and belief in one's own agency is a necessary precondition for emancipatory use of ICTs. And so this is not just some kind of welcome byproduct, but it's an integral part of um, these processes of what we might call inclusion. Then fourthly, um, we need to understand that inequality in access is not, has never been, and will not be solved by framing it in terms of just availability, affordability, technical constraints, or economic inequality alone. There are social cultural norms, including on mobility and the use of time, uh, and these are socially embedded injustices which are structured along gender, ethnicity, disability, and etc. And these play a key role in explaining uneven availability and the quality of access. 
this is something that many of us have kind of brought into up in the discussion, uh, and that's there's some examples of, of that also in, in the book. Um, meaningful, fifthly, meaningful and emancipatory uh, access should be the goal. And this doesn't necessarily have to include producing content. Uh, though, as we discussed, we need more diversity of content. I think uh, Mark and Chris's point, you know, kind of m says it quite nicely. Um, meaningful and emancipated access, however, does include sufficient awareness and understanding of issues such as privacy, surveillance, open or proprietary models, um, advertised-based revenue models, data-based revenue models, what was it with a product yesterday, um, those kinds of things, censorship, and many, of, many colleagues in this room are, are working towards this. All this would then allow people to make informed choices on how they use technology to enable them to live the lives that they have reason to value in the sense of development in the capabilities logic of, of Marty Sen. Sixthly, the political economy and the cultural geopolitics of content and language online. Uh, Mark, uh, Mark Graham, Christian, Barry Sopata have worked on this and, and more of this needs to be done. There's a need for public discussion on, and as the case may be, deeply normative commitments uh, to the value of diversity of perspectives, uh, diversity of forms of knowledge, and always also on linguistic and cultural expression. So these would be my six points uh, for a start of a list. I'm sure the list is longer. Um, there are just some relevant aspects, and I, I look forward to the discussions that we're going to have and look forward to collectively design a research agenda for the future. Thank you.